Hey, what's up, guys? This is the gas hack. The one thing the gasoline companies don't want you to know. Stay tuned. What's up, guys? It's me, it's G again. Sitting outside my garage with <laughs> with the Black Widow. What y'all know about the Black Widow? Yeah, sitting outside the, with, my, with the Black Widow. And uh, <clears throat> the Widow originally was getting about 14 miles a gallon. Went up to 16 when I stopped driving so much because I work from home. But now, we don't even want to talk about it. But anyway, <clears throat> here's the gas hack. Okay, first of all, I want you to watch a little bit of this little video I'm going to put on here from a noted expert, Scotty. He's a noted expert in anything that has to do with cars, trucks, all that kind of stuff, right? And this whole piece is about octane. Why you don't need to be putting 90 plus octane in your car. I don't care what car you drive. And there's a few vehicles that require um, that level of um, octane only because they're a high performance car. But most of us got cars that we drive on the street, right? We're not, we're not racers, right? So it's just a waste of your money. But let's just say you've been putting 91, 93, 97, whatever it is in your car and you want to go down to 87, but you're scared you're gonna mess your car up. First of all, you won't, but let's just just say you're afraid that you'll mess up your car or you won't get the same level of performance. All you got to do is watch this little piece of video and at the end I'm going to show you exactly how you can always use 87 and get not only the same but maybe even better performance from your car. All right, watch this. We'll be right back. Rub up your engine. Today I'm going to tell you why not to waste your hard-earned money on expensive gasoline when your car doesn't need it. Now I started out pumping gas at my father's corner Texaco gas station. And even back in those days, the oil companies, they were pushing their expensive high test premium gasoline. My father ran the station wondered, how come they charge us so much more for the high test than the regular? They actually had a congressional meeting where they asked the car companies, how come the high test gas is so expensive compared to the regular when they found out that it cost maybe a penny more back in those days to make the high test than it did for the regular? Well, the oil companies came back with a simple answer. We have to get back our advertising because in all their advertisements, they only advertise the high test gasoline. Like in Shell's case, you see the ads are all the Shell V power. Their most expensive gasoline. So they're saying, well, all our advertising is tied in with that, so we got to charge a bunch more to pay for the advertising. So, of course, they want you to buy the more expensive gas, even though your car doesn't need it. Take their recent advertising campaign for the Shell V Power Nitro Plus high test gasoline. They claim it has seven times the minimum required cleaning agents in it, but of course, they don't tell you what exactly the agent is, how much is actually in there. Now, of course, they do spend a small fortune advertising this stuff. You'll see YouTubers out there that have sponsored videos by Shell, and they tout this kind of stuff. But hey, that's just paid advertising. Let's get into the real facts here. I've been to Shell Laboratories, and I ask them about the editors. They said, Scotty, we can't tell you. Those are trade secrets. Well, hey. We're buying this stuff. Why is it a secret? And they said stuff like, well, we don't want to get an additive war. Well, why not? I think additive wars would be great. If we had cars that ran cleaner and they put more in, maybe they'd make a little bit less profit. But hey, these oil companies are swimming in the money and for the life of me. I can't understand why you buy a box of cereal. It's got every single ingredient that's in it. So you can compare. Are the cereal companies saying, oh, we don't want a cereal war? Well, I guess they're well open to cereal wars. But the oil companies, no, they're a little more tight-lipped about it. So when someone tells you it's got seven times the cleaner, 
But they won't tell you how much that actually is. Hey, take all this stuff with a grain of salt. BP calls their additives invigorate. Invigorating, isn't it? Hmm. Chevron calls it Tecron. And Shell calls it Shell V-Power Nitro Plus. And that that plus there, the good ones, they contain the PEA. That's the nitrogen-based cleaner, which all those additives, the good additives that you put in your gas tank, they all contain PEA. You take something like sea foam that I don't like, the last time I checked, it contains absolutely no PEA at all. It's a cleaner that was made, since it's called sea foam, for old fish and outboard motor engines in the 50s. There were two-stroke motors where you had to mix oil with the gas. Perfectly fine for that, but for four-stroke modern engines, no, you don't use that kind of stuff. So from what I've read, all the major brands and their premium, they put in some amount of PEA, but they won't tell you how much. I find that amazing myself because I've been to the labs at Shell. Those things are complex. They have all kinds of technology and they could certainly tell you exactly what's in that gasoline, but they're not going to. They're just gonna try to convince you to put their high test, most expensive gas in your car through advertising. So don't listen to their advertising. Hey, I've got a whole video out there on exactly about the different types of gasoline and when to use them, which have been copied by innumerable other YouTubers. So I'm not gonna go into the whole thing, but basically, most cars these days are made to run perfectly normal on regular gasoline, the cheapest stuff there. The higher octane gas, the only difference between that and regular gas is it can take more pressure before it ignites. So if you have a high compression racing engine, or if you have a turbo or supercharger that pumps in more air, which in effect increases the compression. A lot of those, especially the old ones, will only run correctly on high octane gas or they'll knock from pre-ignition. But even that's just the case for the old ones. You take the new ones, I had a Ford Mustang with that four cylinder one that puts out 300 something horsepower. It told you, you could use the premium and you get 300 something horsepower. And if you don't use regular, it'll run perfectly fine. But then you'll have 200 something horsepower instead. It won't have as much power, but it'll run perfectly fine. Ever since I was a young mechanic, when dinosaurs ruled the earth, there's been a battle between the car manufacturers and the oil companies. The car manufacturers say, you can make any kind of gasoline so our cars will run perfectly fine. But then the oil companies would come up with their idea, you can make cars that'll run on any kind of gasoline that we make. <laughs> so they're always battling back and forth. But with modern technology, the car manufacturers basically have solved that problem entirely with computer technology. They make cars that can run on any kind of gasoline and work perfectly fine. If you take an extreme example, the flex fuel cars, they can run on any combination of pure gasoline and ethanol. The stuff you buy at the pump, 10 to 15% ethanol. All cars run on that. But if you ever see one of those E85 ethanol stations, that's 85% ethanol, the alcohol, and only 15% gasoline. You need a special car to run on that all the time, but the manufacturers have figured that out. In that case, they have special oxygen sensors on the exhaust, special fuel pumps that can take the extra alcohol, special fuel injectors that can take all that alcohol without being damaged because alcohol can ruin a lot of fuel parts. But that said, the ethanol is in use in American gasoline. The most common use is 10% ethanol and 90% gasoline. Look at the pumps, a lot of times it'll say, may contain 10% ethanol. Well, if it says may, that means that almost always, that's what's in it. Don't listen to any of those advertising, especially sponsored YouTube videos that are sponsored by the oil companies that talk about their great premium fuel that everyone should use. Don't waste your money on that stuff. Unless you're driving a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and you already wasted tons of money on that so you threw hundreds of thousands out on those things. I realized the truth that in most places, there's one place that refines the gasoline and everyone else buys it from them and then puts their own dye in or puts their own additives in. The basic gasoline from all the companies in one area pretty much come from the same place. If your car runs fine on regular gas, doesn't ping, just stick to it. All cars are made these days to run on that stuff except for exotic cars. And don't even get me talking about the mid-grade gasoline. There's no reason for that at all. <laughs> even my father back in the days, the 1960s said, you know, we got the regular, we got the high test, but what is this plus stuff in the middle? What's even the point of that? Even he wondered back in the day. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.
Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see the money you've been throwing away? I'm getting ready to fix that for you. Watch this. Now, let's say you got a Jeep. And let's say you've been getting 16, 15, 14 miles a gallon on your Jeep. Some people get 9 or 10, depending on what they, what they use their Jeep for. Everybody's mileage changes is different. But let's just say you have a Jeep, like me, right? 2016. I only got 87,000 miles on it. But because I use, I, I've got my Jeep on the pill, right? Because my Jeep is on the pill, she's getting mileage that she's never got before. The oil is clean as a whistle. Never have to worry about my oil being all sludgy and take, I can do 10,000 miles without an oil change. Click on the link below. Just do that. Don't buy another gallon of gas until you see this. Click the link below. Got it? Good. Now I'm gonna get done with this. I'm just smoking this cigar. I'm gonna give the Black Widow a little G-sharp treatment, a little wash down, a little waxation. You feel me? All right, guys. Until we see each other again, as always, I'm partying. Accelerate. <laughs>